Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches y bienvenidos a mi canal. Esta tarde me gustaría ofreceros algo, ya que hace mucho que no hago taller contra la depresión por motivos que no vienen al caso. Me gustaría dejaros en las manos de The Fifth Tree. Fifth Tree. Ya sabéis que mi inglés es cojonudo. Lo tenéis en Epic a 0 euros para que lo quiera tener. Y es un paseo bastante relajante. No es un juego para mi, para mi parecer. Es solamente para leer, escuchar y sobre todo disfrutar de la música. Hasta aquí todo lo que les quiero decir. Por favor, espero que les guste. Me voy a callar y les dejo ya con Fifth Tree. De Fifth Tree. Ya saben ustedes cómo se pronuncia. Que lo disfruten. Are you awake? I thought I heard you get up. Yeah, I'm awake. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about... about him? Yeah, a bit. You should get back to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? <sighs> I don't know. It seems weird. But I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. I saw a fox on a snowy mountain, just looking confused and worried. Those eyes, I can't get those eyes out of my head. She was running in the windy snow, looking for something. Do you think it has to do with, with you and what's been going on? I don't know. It was just a dream, Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days, that's all. Well, if you're not going to sleep anyway, you should tell me. I want to hear. All right. So, not far from her home, she followed that path to something unexpected. She couldn't stay though. She had to find her other two children. So she took that path. She followed it towards something ancient. Something with answers. The fox looked high and low, searching for any sign of her cubs. Points of light showed the way to this ancient tree. It was as if each one had a story to tell, all their own. The land was trying to tell my story, too. I felt like I was right behind her the whole time.
guys would leave me alone, but somehow they could tell I was different. They made fun of how far away I lived. They called my dad a sourdough. I was a blabbermouth as a kid, telling my dad stories I made up for hours. But after that show and tell, I didn't tell him much anymore. He didn't know exactly what was wrong, but his best guess was that the toys he carved weren't cool enough. He carved me a tank and tried to tell me what it was like to be in a real tank as a serviceman. I didn't know your dad was in the military. Yeah, in the army. The sad thing is that I'd pretty much forgotten until just now. There's so much I still don't know about him. I'm sorry. He knows how much you love him. You're going to see him again soon and have some closure, I'm sure. way of putting it. If wood was a canvas, then a carving knife was his paintbrush. Even after working a 50-hour week, even after his hands were more splinters than skin, he would bring home the nicest piece of Alaskan weeping cedar and make me toys. That wooden train was the first toy I can remember, and I loved it. I just knew from a young age I was going to be a lumberjack, like my father. show and tell in your class? Yeah, I, I think I only did it once, when I was in the fourth grade. You know how my life was around then. I wanted to show my class what helped pass the time and distract me, so I brought a dozen paper cranes I had made. I think I told everyone how badly I wanted to be a bird and fly, embarrassingly enough. Don't be embarrassed. Every kid wants to fly. For me, it was another toy for my dad, a wooden boat. I remember guarding it so carefully in my hands as I walked into class. When I sat down, a group of boys immediately made fun of it. They asked which trash can I found it in, or why an ugly log was my favorite toy. When I got up, I didn't even want to tell them my dad had carved it. I said it was a joke gift my friends had given me. Kids can be so cruel. Some of them are. I shouldn't have let them get to me, but it did. It's amazing we bounce back at all.
myself, why talk to anybody anyway? Why bother when I'm happy by myself? I started drawing a lot, mostly animals I saw in the woods by my home. I then imagined designing my own hideouts with things like TVs and pantries full of chips and cookies. I think that idea of leaving home and drawing blueprints started my career. I found a lot of solace in that. I'm not surprised, but I did the same thing, you know? There's something special about having a place to call your own. And now look at us. Well, you count renting in an overpriced city. <laughs> it's as close as we can get for now.
Bien. Y con esto termina el capítulo piloto, o primer capítulo, de esta aventura. Bueno, pues a ver si me van a dejar subirlo o no subirlo. Espero mucho que les haya gustado. Y les emplazo por si... Por si YouTube me deja subir más capítulos de este, a... Pues a echarse y a disfrutar de la música y, y disfrutar de... De la aventura. Sin más que decir, muchas gracias y que descansen.